Hi, this is Bruce Kulick, and you're listening to Shout It Out Loudcast with Tom and Zeus. These guys know Kiss inside and out. They freak me out all the time. You're going to enjoy it. The episode is epic. Oh, boy. Here we go. Boy. Pressing the button, Star or Simmons? Star? Is that what he does? Stop shouting! Hey, Riley. He's not what you would call a handsome man. Oh no, here come the kiss times. Is that a positive thing? Okay. Alright. Gonna grab me a nice cold mellow young. Why? Why do that to the fan? Stop it. Why? Cause fuck him. That's all. Six one seven five two five zero. You do? Hey, fucko! Do you like this? Settle down. Hello, hey, what's up there, Kiss Army? Tom and Zeus in another episode of Shout It Out Loudcast, episode two fifty two. Shout It Out Loudcast Hall of Fame. Class of 2023. Yeah, and not, this will be dropping on the day of the final show. So depending on when you listen to this, that could be it. Yeah, and I think we will be leading all the headlines as to, you know, the news story of the day. Oh, well, yeah, it won't be Kiss's final show. It'll be <laughs> no. the Hall of Fame. It'll be the no. Hall of Fame induction. It most likely will be like in the porn category, Who who made it. Yeah, who, sorry. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of discussion here. There's going to be a, a ticker on friggin' CNN and Fox News. Yeah. Breaking news. <laughs> yeah, exactly. His tards unite. <laughs> well, it was a real big decision, Tom. Yeah. You know? So, yes, uh, yes. but oh, I have a story for you before we Do get it. started. Uh, I picked up my kid from school and she said, Dad, guess what? Oh, no. You don't mind. I won't say her name, but she's the science teacher in her class. Science! <laughs> Apparently, the science teacher was talking to one student and had her back towards another student's face. This is going to be bad. Don't tell me she farted. Don't, t- don't tell me. <laughs> she did. <laughs> she went. <And> the- <laughs> she went, oops. <laughs> Almost like that other lady I told you. She said, Oops, Talia. In the said. kid's face? And she said, I just passed gas. <laughs> like, I guess the kid didn't know it or hear it. No one really heard it. She right. She said, oops, I'm sorry. I just passed gas. <laughs> right in the <laughs> kid's face. <laughs> the only thing better than that story is the fact that your daughter found it necessary <laughs> to tell you about it. And everybody started laughing. And she got kind of like upset, was like, well, everybody does it. Don't say you guys don't do it, too. Like, had a like, discussion and, yeah, about and, it. And guess what? Everybody laughs when they do it. So get used to it. Yeah, no one just rips one in someone's face. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> OK, kids, today in American history. Oop, I'm sorry. I just passed gas. She said, like, her ass was like right in the kid's <laughs> face. Can we and put her in the Hall she, of Fame? Yeah, and that's why she had to apologize. <laughs> oh man, I love. There might be some apologizing after our weekend in New York City. Oh, there's going to be a lot of shit. We're going to have to apologize for. Good oh, thing yeah. I got wind. Good, good thing the windows in my car operate correctly because we're going to need them. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be a little gassy in that car, Tom. <laughs> man, oh god. <laughs> Oh God! Those heated seats are going to heat themselves up. Well, oh. I, I think uh, I think we uh, ordered the triple pack uh, of sprays, Tom. I think I told you, right? What? What are you talking about? Nobody does. We don't do that. That's that's other people that do that. That's not us. What are you talking yeah. about? There's a, a triple pack. One says stinky ass. Well, the other one says toxic bomb. <laughs> And what's the best? Says, what's the best one? This is my favorite. I can't wait this for is the this be- one. This is the best one. Smell from hell. <laughs> I think that's a fucking like sabotage album, isn't it? Or a fucking Halloween. Uh, Halloween. Halloween. It's a Halloween album. The smell, smell from hell. <laughs> S- 
Smelloween. <laughs> Grim Reaper fucking double deluxe album. <laughs> Anyway, we got a lot to get to and a short amount of time to edit this, record it, all that shit. So we're going to zip through this episode and make sure we have it ready for you guys because we can't leave without doing something for you, right? That's right. That's right. Last week, we reviewed the Creatures of the Net Super Deluxe Fun Time uh, box set disc two, Tom. Yep. And uh, we did a poll. Yes, we did. So we took four of the tracks that are kind of new to that disc. Uh, Deadly Weapon, Feels Like Heaven, Something Seems to Happen at Night, and It's Gonna Be All Right. And Deadly Weapon crushes the poll here with 65%. Feels Like Heaven at 18. It's Gonna Be All Right at 13. Something Seems to Happen at 3%. Not a lot of people familiar with this disc, obviously. I mean, these songs are obviously new. So uh, diehards were pretty much the people that commented on here. Um, LP. He's got a hot take here. That's right. Our buddy Sterlino. These four songs show how far and away and how much better Kiss's scraps are in comparison to other great bands. He says, feels like heaven would be Iron Maiden's best song. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Buck says, deadly weapon. The OG version has spoiled it for me. This one's okay. Feels like Kevin is okay, too, but it's way too repetitive. It gets old quick. It's going to be all right. Could have been reworked and put on Carnival. Speed it up in some key changes and maybe put it on Crazy Nights. Oh, yeah. There's a lot you can pick apart with some of those songs there. Um, and then let's see. The episode in general, a lot of people had things to say. Uh, MD says, and now I've got Ladies Night stuck in my head, you bastards. <laughs> oh, yes, it's Ladies Night. <laughs> Tom, um, I don't know if you got to listen to the episode. I dropped that clip in a couple times, diff- that, and I put sophisticated, sophisticated mama. mama. Oh, love it. Love it. Uh, what did and I tell good... you? But wait, whoa, whoa. What oh, did I ahead. say about Cool in the Gang? They are the safest, the safest this black band for white people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like the band when white people are like, I like R&B. I like Cool <laughs> in the Gang. Yes. It's like those videos you can see like they used to sell on VHS. How to dance. Yeah. For soul dancing, and they're all listening to <laughs> fucking uh, cool in the game music. Uh, I'm a big fan of urban music. I have Billy Ocean's greatest hits. What are you talking about? <laughs> Billy Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Our buddy uh, Amber Fiber Magic Queen. Hey, guys, I'm gutted for Ottawa. I had friends that travel through, the, through a snowstorm to find out just before the doors opened that it was canceled, and we'll get into oh. that. We'll get into that. And she says, and secondly... Taste the biscuit. <laughs> Ooh, that grandma wants someone's gonna taste her biscuit. And then mm-hmm. probably and then mm-hmm. probably oh, probably mm-hmm. my favorite comment from our buddy Daryl Albert. I kept screaming, Willie McGee, not exactly a handsome man. And then he <laughs> and then he posts his early 80s Cardinals baseball card. And he, he looks, looks like, like he a, just, he looks like a salamander. He looks like he just, he looks like you, the, your daughter's teacher just fought it in his face. <laughs> but he just, he always looked like a, like a, like a little a newt or something. Uh, uh, newt. Gerald Rosenberg, not Saul, says, I think the episode title was longer than the actual episode. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a short <laughs> episode. He goes, I'm looking forward to a future dorm damage episode about 70s and 80s baseball players. Do you like? <laughs> Dan Quisenberry. <laughs> oh man, yeah, you know, this is. This no, is I, I was a big fan of Gorman Thomas, Tom. Oh, Storming Gorman Thomas. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. My, ben Ogilvy was my go-to guy, but uh, that's what we got for Twitter. Him. Yeah, yeah, of course. All He's right, good, good. Let's go to uh, Facebook. Um, Alan Hunt, excellent episode. Listen to "Loves a Deadly Weapon." Penny Lane demo. That sounds a lot like Ace doing the solo or someone doing a great Ace impersonation. Is there any info about who played on the demos? I don't have it, but I looked, uh, couldn't find anything. We we just sent up the uh, Kiss Nerd alert, so maybe somebody (laughs) will reply. Uh, Jesse Ball says, Damn it, Zeus, you get me every time when you throw in that little cackle at the end of your Ace impression. I'm glad somebody picked up on that because I purposely leave that in there because yep, yep. that's how he always laughs. He was that, that little lingering. <laughs> awesome. 
Uh, Kevon Jepson. Giggity, 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 giggity. I absolutely love something seems to happen at night. Yeah. When you're around, something sleeps to happen at night. Oof. Sex crimes. Uh, such a cool <laughs> vibe. Definitely not kiss. I call it Miami Vice Gene. Sounds like it could have been written for that. He has a couple other songs in the vault that sound like this. And I think they're cool. I like the different vocal sound. Yeah, he's definitely projecting a different, like, uh, style in his vocal delivery mm-hmm. on those. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Adam Nirenberg. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Aaron Nirenberg. <laughs> How are you? Uh, a- another great Saturday morning. I was listening to your episode when I first heard the demos of the Creatures box. I remembered a few things. I think Feel Like Heaven is a dynasty demo. Chrome goes into motion, the, which is off the record, is just the stupidest title. Um, I think it's an elder demo. Don't Leave Me Alone was finished by Brian Adams. It's on his Cuts Like a Knife album. Eric Carr yep. is credited with the co-write. As far as your question of the week, Ezra was never considered for creatures having produced their first bona fide flop in Elder, which is why he was called back after 10 years, giving uh, God Rock and Roll to you a test to see where he was at. He should have produced uh, Carnival Souls as his next project with Kiss, but could not obligate himself to it. Uh, thanks for another enjoyable episode. And there's nothing better than T and Z on a Saturday morning. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Charles, don't call me Mark Eaton. Say what you will <laughs> about Taste the Biscuit duo, but that synth solo is kicking. All right, people. How many of you here? Like honey sauce. <laughs> what? So stupid. Over on our Instagram, Junior Vintage. All this classic MLB talk was great. If you've never heard of LA Dodgers manager Tommy Lasorda, oh, of course, go after Kurt Bevacqua from the San Diego <laughs> Padres in a media scrum in 1982. Same year this album came out. Worth the search on YouTube. Enjoy the shows in New York City. And thanks for the shout out on comment of the week. Anytime, my friend. Anytime. Nice. The great Eric Salmon. Great episode as always. Something seems to happen as a good tune from the vault. I have three. Gene didn't write it, but put the vocals on. I pictured this song playing on an episode of Miami Vice while yep. Gene is driving around being tailed by Sonny and Tubbs. <laughs> Bert Butler TD. I wonder if Taste the Biscuit, whether it's better with honey sauce or a cold, refreshing, mellow yellow. Another inclusion for Originals 3, maybe. <laughs> I got a new <laughs> song. It's called Taste the Biscuit. Taste the Biscuit. <laughs> Taste oh, we'll the get to that. of the honey sauce. <laughs> Damien Moon Drum says, I thought you were going to say something about the fact that the lyrics of Feel Like Heaven and I Am Animal are the same. They are? Interesting. Somebody take a look at that. I don't know if that's accurate, but... Uh, Good for you. I've never listened to I'm an Animal enough to remember (laughs) the lyrics. (laughs) I'm an Animal was actually a live song they played, Tom. I know. Isn't that insane? I feel all the songs that they haven't played. That's nuts. (laughs) I think Over I was on. one of them. We were one of them. We went on those. We went to those tours. Yeah. Over on YouTube, Thonis23. We know who he is. Uh, boy, sitting in my New York City hotel room, not being able to sleep due to a 19-hour flight Oof. and changes of time zones. At least I had you guys to listen to. One thing that baffles me, boys, is some of the choices on these tracks and these box sets. Who chooses all these insignificant takes of tunes, which are terrible or have been repeated twice in a box set? Agreed. Some of the better tunes should have been finished and released, especially Betrayed on disc three. Stay tuned for next year. We'll get, we'll definitely get to that. Yep. Guitar Gods Unite. First comment. Just here to say that this is how I end my Friday nights. Look forward to listening while doing my routine. What routine? Are you like a busy dancer as well? I have a little monkey. I bring him on stage. I dress him up in a ballerina suit and I beat him into oblivion. <laughs> he pulls large the, pieces of furniture. The crowd seems to love it. <laughs> Birdman? Is you the Birdman? 
Yeah. <laughs> I Dan and I beat him into oblivion. <laughs> That's the uh, opening act for the final shows at Madison yeah. Square Garden. Oh, no, we'll get on to that. Yeah, I know, I know. And I'll end with this one, Tom. Hit the end, Bell 6680. I know I'm butchering that tit, Tian. Uh, but uh, he, uh, he or she says, it's like an addiction. I have to listen to you two idiots to make myself feel better about myself. Wow. Knowing that I am not the only kiss nerd out there makes me feel good. No matter what my friends and family think of me, thank you for doing this podcast for us kissaholics. Uh, you mean kiss tarts? <laughs> yeah, whether you think you're a nerd or not, why don't you just come on down here? Yeah. <laughs> what is a kiss tart? <laughs> we are. I'm a kiss tart. I'm pretty proud of it. Somebody <laughs> threw a rock through his window and says, "Kiss tart, get <laughs> out." <laughs> oh no! What is a kiss tart? <laughs> we are. We are. <laughs> Gosh, you got too many kings here. Come on. Anyway, uh, Tom, that's what I got. Over to you, buddy. All right, let's bang out a couple emails here. This comes from Damian McGinnis. Hey, guys, I went to the Vancouver concert on November 8th and thought I would share some YouTube links to sound check and concert videos. Been listening for the last few years and don't miss any of your shows. I truly look forward to them every week. Great fucking job to both of you. All the best from British Columbia, Western Canada. Enjoy those New York City final shows. This was my 10th kiss show, and it might be the best one yet. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. And he sent, sends us some links of, uh, they did Harder Than Hell at Soundcheck. They did Plaster Caster at Soundcheck. Put that in the fucking set list, band. Anyways, uh, Keith Wetzel. Hey, are you guys going to let us know where you're sitting for the last show? I thought I remembered you were in the first couple rows. This would be good to know ahead of time for those of us who are getting the pay per view and tuning in to see you guys. Second row floor seats. Look at us. Uh, you won't be able to miss us. Of uh, uh, Hopefully the cameras are that close and zooming in on the idiots that we are, but you'll see us. Yeah. We'll be the people get escorted out because in the middle of the show, Paul Stanley fart face will come on and be like, be like, hold like, on a second. What the fuck is that smell? Exactly. I, I think somebody over here in the front just shit himself. <laughs> Uh, we, we got one here from Tracy Law. Big fan of you guys. Love your show and appreciate all you do. Wanted to know if you're going to be at the last show on Saturday. Me and my family are headed up from Georgia and would love to stop by and meet y'all if you're going to be set up somewhere. Well, Tracy, we are going to be there all weekend. We're going to be at the Friday show and Saturday show right now. To be honest with you, we don't know where we're going to be going. Um, the Thursday night. Uh, by the time you listen to this, obviously that will have happened. So I guess me telling you what we're doing Thursday really doesn't matter. Um, that happened just now. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, maybe we'll respond to your email and tell you because by the time this episode airs, it'll probably be over by then, but that's okay. Thank you for the kind words. Anyways, um, Hall of Famer Jim Riley chimes in again. Um, hope you don't get struck by lightning going to Madison Square Garden. Not Thanks. sure if this is your. Not sure if this is your first time. You might get hit with 10,000 volts. Oh, oh, uh, wait till that bar comes up. Ooh, yeah, this, he, that. said this is one of life's biggest regrets, not going to the final show. I am glad you both are. Can't wait to hear about New York City, Craig Gas, et cetera, et cetera. Um, hope you have the best time a KISS fan can have. Jim, you're the best. Uh, and believe me, we're excited for the weekend. and We're excited to talk about it for next week's episode. It's going to be great. Um, and that's what we got for emails. Lots of great stuff. And we're going to wrap it up with a final comment here off of Facebook from Maxine Como. I have been an intense listener for about two months now on Spotify. Let me tell you, Tom and Zeus, you have not only relit the fire under my kiss love and ass with your smart, loving and insightful analysis of the band's works and members, but you've also made me laugh to tears on several occasions. I immediately fell in love with your catchphrases like settle down. In imitations, I can't get enough of the freely mocking, much as I love him. And I love how opinionated yet realistic and balanced your views are. You ridicule and poke fun at the things that, let's face it, deserve to be laughed at. But you're never mean or hateful in any way. Respect. In fact, mad respect. I saw Kiss for the seventh time in Montreal on the 18th and enjoyed it and was grateful for one last go. But nothing will ever touch the hungry Kiss I saw in 1992 at 12 years old. Long story, but thank you, Tom and Zeus. You're both doing a fantastic job. Can't get enough. You'll be hearing more from me. You've got a fan in me. 
Woo. Awesome. Awesome. That's fucking fantastic, Max. And thank you so much for those kind words. We love hearing that. And uh, again, we do this show for you guys as much as we love doing the show and love the band and all that good stuff that you chimed in there. And thank you for that. You are the comment of the week. Good answer. Good answer. I like the way you think. I'm going to be watching you. <laughs> Much appreciated. Thank you so much for that. And uh, we hope to keep hearing comments from you as we go along. That's right. Um, Tom, what we do next is we give a shout out to Patreon. Patreon has been a huge part of our growth. They uh, support the show. You become a member. Uh, There's different tiers. With those different tiers come different perks, whether it be uh, involvement in the show, polls, uh, merch, video chats we got a lot lined up and coming up for 2024 we just dropped our arc patreon pick aerosmith rocks today so patreon is get gets involved in our show and we like to think that we give them so much back and if you're interested in joining our patreon family please do so it's never been at a higher number we have a shit ton of patreon people that we think are part of what we call the patreon family there's inside jokes inside messages it's a ton of fun if you are interested in becoming a patreon member for loudcasters please go to our website shout it out loudcast.com you'll see the link there or you can go to patreon the app or patreon.com and find shout it out loudcast look at the different tiers and pick a tier that works for you uh, it really helps the show. It's a big reason why the success we've had and the continued growth. And we like to think that our Patreon family is only going to get bigger and better for next year. So if you've been on the fence about it, take a look, come join the fun and be part of the family. Thank you all to our Patreon family. And uh can't wait to give you guys some inside scoops coming up after this uh crazy week ahead. Yeah, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. All the contributions that you guys give to the show is just incredible. We appreciate your generosity more than you know, and there's tons of great things that we like to give back. Sneak peeks on the episodes, uh, involvement in what we post for Flashback Fridays. As Zeus mentioned, our album review crew, we just did Aerosmith Rocks, thanks to the patrons, uh, and it just continues to grow. It's a great family, so please check us out, patreon.com, or download the app and search for us. Tom, what we do next is we go over to Kiss World. And uh, that looks like the ride at Kiss World is ending. Yeah. So, yeah, let's let's first start off with with Kiss centric stuff, which was the cancellation of a few shows last week uh, due to Paul Stanley's illness and kind of that real jarring photo of him in bed hooked up to an IV. Uh, And then there was a story that came out a few days later about he was kind of concerned that he was literally thought that he was fearing he was going to die. Uh, which was kind of alarming to read those words come out of his mouth, kind of gives a little bit of uh, perspective of the band and how old they are and how old we are. Uh, So that was quite shocking, and I feel terrible for those fans because the shows are canceled. They're not going to be rescheduled. Those people are giving all their money back, so that is an absolute tragedy for those fans. Uh, That sucks, of course. So that was that was some huge news. The other big news is that we have discovered that Paul's son's band, Amber Wilde, who should be a Hall of Fame porn star with that name (laughs) is actually going to be the opening act for Madison Square Garden. Just whatever, Uh, whatever it is, what it is. I I wasn't expecting much, but I was maybe not expecting that. Yeah. And um, I mean, it's a tremendous amount of press and publicity for his kid. Absolutely. Um, I I don't know. I, I, I haven't heard any of his music. He seems like a good kid. I don't yeah. hate him for any of that stuff. Seems like he's got a good head on his shoulders. He cares, and hopefully he's not bad. And uh, you know, it it works for him. It's just one of those things that we've always talked about. I bet you that's one of the things that he he made with Gene. Yeah, I'll continue this. My son's gonna be the fucking opener. Yep. And and Gene's probably like, okay, Paul, no okay. problem. Yep. He, whatever. He, he ain't messing that up. Right, so right. I mean, it's, we'll see how it is. Yeah. Big chance. So yeah. Uh, and then the other big thing that everybody's got losing their mind over is the release of Ace Frehley's 
new single, 10,000 Volts, off the album of the same name, and then the release of the album cover artwork. The single has been released, and the video has been released. I'll let you take this one first, Zeus, on uh, all the Ace news. Yeah, did you hear my new <laughs> my new song? It's just out, 10,000 Volts. It's got a space theme to it. I never do those. You know, it's kind of a new thing that I wanted to try out and see how it goes. Um, I said to you, this is my conversation with Tom through text. Read it. Yeah, I just watched. I put, this is me. It's okay. Rock, but chorus is yuck. His singing is brutal and enough about, enough singing about space. We get it. You're the real spaceman. Tom writes, exactly. I think it sounds like it could be on Trouble Walking. You wrote, agreed. That's what I thought. I said, a new singer and lyrics, maybe it works. It's a great riff, you write, and a good song, but he wrecks it. But I said, of course I'll buy it because I'm a completionist, not because it's good. <laughs> He's like, I already own the Trouble Walking in one of his live albums. And uh, I'm going to make the... Uh, prediction right now tom there will be at least five different versions of this on vinyl at least there's are there's already four what they've already they've already released four they released they released a silver vinyl with an alternate cover oh, my God. oh no i'm dead serious they released a silver vinyl with an alternate cover artwork they released they released a colored splatter vinyl with the original color artwork and then i believe they released a solid red and a solid green or something there's right as of this recording there's four Variants for the vinyl. Yes. Hey, I'm a little lazy. Why don't we, instead of releasing four albums, why don't we do one album and just change the color and the and and just keep selling it? Those those Ace cultists, they'll buy anything. Where's the cassette? Everybody's looking for the Lara. Get grab the cassettes. Oh, he'll, I'm sure he'll sell that on cassette too. Yeah. But get but but regarding the song, um. I will say, I think the production is fantastic. The production sounds like almost like old school Kiss or early, like early Ace. The riff sounds great. The band sounds fucking fantastic. I think the riff is catchy. I think the song is hooky and catchy. And then Ace opens up his mouth and he just, he, he, look, for a guy who we've seen in concert, we've seen on YouTube who like can't sing. The production magic here to make him sound semi tolerable is amazing. Um, and the video is pretty cool because you got, uh, Jeremy Asbrock and, uh, Ryan Michael Scott, Spencer Rodham Clinton Cook playing yeah. in there. Um, so the video is whatever. I, the song is okay. I mean, it's not, it, it's probably the best it's ace. Typical it's, it's like, ace shit though. No offense. It's, just, no, it's I know what but, he puts out. None of it's fucking anything good. If he had no affiliation with Kiss, I would never buy any of his sucking shit. None. Dude, the only, I told you, the only thing I own from him is Trouble Walking in one of his live albums. That's it. Yeah. I've never been, I've heard all of his stuff, but I, I don't mind the Fraley's Comet shit because I thought that's Todd's good. That's pretty, pretty good. good. Yes. Second sighting, whatever. And pe- people will come and be like, Oh, Tom, how many, you know, did you already pre order the vinyl? I go, No, I'm not buying any of these. I, I won't buy any of these. If he wasn't any affiliation with Kiss and Ace from the past, I wouldn't fucking buy any of this shit. I give him I'm credit. Sorry. I, people are saying the same thing. And for all the people that are accused of being Kiss tards, I have <laughs> never, se- I have never in my life seen the Ace cult come out more in full force with torches and pitchforks than when this song and this video and this album came out. Do you out. know the hysteria that the, this is the greatest fucking thing. Kiss has never done. Dude, have you heard the whole fucking album? Oh, yeah, because I have secret friendship behind the scenes. What, what, are, you talk- you- Zeus, what are you talking about? It's the best album since his 78 solo. It's, yeah, it's better than the- Kiss has released anything in the last yeah. 40 years. Yeah. Oh, I'm buddies with him. Oh, you're buddies with him? What, because you go to fucking meet and greets and pay money to see him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're not your buddies. Guess what? The people out there, if Ace was singing Happy Birthday, you'd fuck it. Just fucking yeah. amazing. It's hey. Ace. His spaceman is back. Ace has got this new song. It's called Taste the Biscuit. Have you heard it? <laughs> but it's just, there's no fucking way he can sing this song live. It has oh, too many no words. Wh- too exactly. many words. You thought Plus the- Vince is out of breath. Imagine Ace trying to sing this wor- this song. Plus the, the chorus pl- again. <laughs> plus the the chorus is way too. There's too much like hooky melody in here, and he'll he'll butcher it. But I I do think musically, 
I think this. I think the production sounds great. Anton on the drums is awesome. The riff is cool. I th- I do think it's better than a lot of his recent stuff, like Anomaly or Space Invader. I do think it's better than that stuff. But it's only one song, I, and, I'll, and I think I think it falls right in line with that. It's yeah. just nothing that fucking pulls at me. No. It's nothing I'll, I'll li- special. I'll, no, and when the rest of it comes out, I'll listen to it on Spotify. So, do you think do anything you've heard like that song or the last couple albums is better than Lightning Strikes or Out of This World? No, I've told you before that those are, I told you before that I think when lightning strikes is, is one of the best songs on Sonic Boom and out of this world is one of the best songs on monster easily. Yep. Easily. And I'm not saying, and, and look, and I, look for all the teasing and, and, and mimicking that we do of ace, we're ace fans. We're fans of ace, but the cultist mentality about how he can literally do no wrong and that whatever he does is magic. Is is foolish and and you look you look silly by not having any critical thought on this. Yeah, it's you the same do. people all over every fucking Kiss group saying the same thing, the greatest fucking thing. Oh my god! And then other people that are like the realist are like, yeah. dude, I, I I hate to admit it, but this is kind of bad. This isn't very good." And well, you know what's funny too? And I'll give Ace credit in a, in a fucking dickhead way. He drops it right leading up to the final weekend of the Kiss shows. Oh, yeah, he's going to be on Eddie's show. He's I think it's perfect. This, uh, I, yeah, yeah, I, I think I love, it. I, lo- I, lo- I love it. I love I love it because you know why? It's a culminate because after this weekend, think about it. This The, the Kiss drama is going to be effectively dead. I mean, it think might about be the things- fucking paycheck he could have made himself. Right. What are you talking about? 10,000 volts is going to send 10,000 <laughs> copies. <laughs> then I'll get 10,000 tax liens on my property. Tom, I'm going to need help in that shed. Please, let me stay a little longer. Hey, Tom, the, the IRS is going to garnish my wages. So uh, can you can you pay me under the table if I do an unplugged set of Anomaly and Genghis Khan 1 through 6? Ace, how are they garnishing your wages? You don't have any. <laughs> they go on all the clubs I play at, and they're already hitting up the club managers and producers. I already got a booking at the uh, Nashua VFW. <laughs> it's going to be sold out, all 200 seats. I got to play underground clubs so I can get paid in cash. What are you talking about, Zeus? He sells out 5,000-seat venues. What's the matter with you? We'll make jokes like that. <laughs> yeah, sure he does. <laughs> God bless Ace. We I know, him, I know. We want know. him to be happy. We want success. I'll tell you this, okay? For all the shit that we get for fucking saying we shit on Ace and this that, I just wish, okay? And I can say the same thing for Peter, too. And Peter's my yeah. favorite member. Yep. Okay? Peter has yet to ever release anything as good as Black Diamond, Nowhere, uh, Nothing to Lose, nothing. Uh, oh, yeah, Baby no. Driver. Okay? Ace, to me has never released anything as good as he's had on 78 never. or on dynasty or Once shot you go me a rocket that, ride or anything like that. Never. No, no, he hasn't come never. close to that. And if never. he was still putting albums and shit like that, uh, there's some other kiss news, but again, we're recording this. And by the time the episode drops, a lot of it will be kind of old news, but you know, the New York city takeover, the, you know, they're lighting up the empire state building. They're doing things with the cabs and things with the Metro ticket passes. Um, it's 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 I will say this. I am really, really excited and frankly surprised that like New York is like is doing this and that Kiss is doing this. At least they at least they're doing something. So I'm excited for that. I'll, I'll say that. I, th- the, I think it's pretty awesome. They teamed up with the Rangers. They've got yes. the Empire State Building. The New York. What one is, is it's not. the Is it the Post that's got that? Fucking, the New York Post. Yep. Yeah. Like how many bands are getting this treatment? Do you think an Aerosmith's considered a bigger band? Boston ain't doing that shit for fucking Aerosmith. Nope. Nope. Right? Like, that's a fucking big deal. I can't remember any fucking city doing, never mind New York. I agree. This, I mean, it's endearing for me because me it's our, our favorite band is getting yep. some, uh, uh, some wonderful love and treatment. So when people are, oh, kiss that silly, yeah? Well, they ain't fucking pulling this shit out for, uh, the Eagles didn't get this shit. The Beach Boys ain't getting this shit. Right. And before we get to uh, a couple last thoughts here, Tom, I, I want to do give a shout out our buddy Joey Casada. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He's got his new single out. I think he's doing a release. Unfortunately, the same day as the Craig Gas uh, thing. Yeah. But he, I said it to him, and, I, and you agreed with me. Yep. I'm sorry. 
his album sound his single sounds way better than Ace's. Without a doubt. And I'll get and, and you know what's really cool too, and, and another and kudos to Joey. They're playing his song on satellite radio. They're playing it on, on Sirius. It's awesome. Good for him. They should. It fucking's good. The video's good. Yeah, I, I fucking like it. And and it's not because he's our friend. Right. Because if he was our friend, he wouldn't get denied like he's gonna get denied in a little bit. <laughs> That's true. For That's the true. second time. <laughs> That's true. So, <laughs> but uh, to be realistic, I think his shit is better. So congrats to him. I do too. Uh, yeah, agreed. agreed. And the last thing, Tom, I want to say is we've we've you know, one of the privileges of running this show is you stop becoming friends with people, so you start hearing secrets and things like that. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I was already, I mean, we knew about the Bruce stuff. So technically that broke last week. So we knew that Bruce wasn't going to be in New York. We had uh, had some emails back and forth and he had told us and we were like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. So we were kind of holding our tongues. Obviously, we're not going to betray his confidence. No. And uh, we knew about that. But I'll be honest. There's a couple things. Uh, my fingers are crossed when you hear this, because some of you might play this before the actual concert. I don't know. I don't want to get my hopes up. I'm going this with my best friends to enjoy my favorite band and have them go out and, and have a blast. Yep. Anything more than that, I, I, I will be super excited. But I've heard a couple of rumblings and yes. I don't want to share too much, but you never know. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going into this. Like you said, my two best friends, my favorite band, a weekend in New York City. I don't care. I, I uh, this is the first time where I don't care what they play. Or I, I just the fact that we're going to be there, but we are we are hearing some rumblings from some p contacts that we're that we've become friends with that there might be something a little a little different about the final show. We don't know yeah. what it is and to what extent. Yeah. Well, let's hope that's true. And with that, that's why Bruce wasn't invited. Correct. That it wouldn't work with him there. Co that's so which. We'll see. Okay? We'll see. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's take a quick break. Get ready. Fill up the car with gas. Grab our fart sprays. Get ready for our trip to New York. And then uh, let me put my luggage. What the fuck? Who the fuck is in the back? Oh, <laughs> I, I needed a lift to New York. Hey, Tom, can you drop me off along the way? It's getting pretty cold out, and I got a couple things in a in a locker in a, back in a, a Grand Central Station that I left there in '75. I want to see if my jacket's still there. Gonna need it for these New Hampshire winters, Tom. Your, your shed's not very insulated. Uh, so we're back. Uh, we agreed to d drive Ace halfway. Um, because he was really having some <laughs> problems sitting in the back seat there. He was eating all of our snacks. He was killing all of our drinks. He was ripping it badass in the car. <laughs> the windows were open the entire time and it's cold. So we, we dropped him off at a rest stop in Connecticut. You know, Lara's going to pick me up here. She's been hawking some cassettes to pay for gas money. I'll see you guys in NYC. Thanks for the lift. Hey guys, I've always used to eat the, the, the red kind of Doritos, but these, uh, these, you know, these blue flavored fucking uh, cool ranch Doritos are going right through me. I got to be honest with you. I think I need a diaper. <laughs> oh, God. Let me tell you about the girl that used to tell my daughter when she was in like first and second grade. She, was like, she, she wasn't allowed to have blue Doritos. They make her fart. <laughs> Cool, cool Ranch, that's my favorite. Yeah, but the girl couldn't have it. She tell you wanted to share a lunch. She's like, I can't have those. My mom says they make me fart. Your mom says it? You don't know that they make you fart? You need somebody to tell you that they make you fart? She was like in the first oh, and second no, I grade. Know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Drink. <laughs> All right, Tom, it's that time of year. Our new and favorite tradition, the Hall of Fame. Shout it's it out loud, Pass Hall of Fame, class of 2000. 23. Here we go. Let's do it. All right. So we created the Hall of Fame last year. A bunch of different categories. We're going to have some fun. And again, this isn't serious. I don't want to. Oh, how the fuck did you pick that movie? Right, right. 
you yep. know, let's have some fun here, guys. There's yep. too much stupid shit in the world. This is meant to have some fun and to recognize some people that have been really generous to us and helpful. And uh, we hope you enjoy this one. Uh, this yeah, is, and, uh, and it's and it's also a way to recognize what we talk about all year on the show with with our jokes, our pop culture references, our our you know, and it's just a way to kind of again have some fun and, and make. The show, like we said, about you guys, more of a family, more of like a real, real interactive show. Tom, pretty simple. We're going to go with artist. Last year, Kiss and Led Zeppelin made it. Who's making it this year? Well, my nominee for 2023 is going to be a band that we both love, that we've covered on the album review crew, that we still listen to to this day. And I am nominating Alice in Chains for the Shout It Out Loudcast Hall of Fame. Love it. Love it. Yep. Uh, What about you, Booger? (laughs) Well, um, it's not really a nomination because it's not like I'm going to prevent you from putting them in. Yeah, maybe that that wasn't the right word. Maybe maybe I should have said I'm selecting. Yeah. Um, Fair. You know, I've gone back and forth a couple different times, but I'm going to go with this band. And okay. again, Tom and, and I were talking about this. We're like, we're not going to just pick who's our number one fucking album on ARC. Okay, no. so the next year, number three will go in. The next year, right. number four. And yep. same thing with Kiss songs. Oh, what do we have ranked there? We just, for some reason, these songs or albums or artists are getting in. So yep. for me, in the Shout It Out Loudcast Hall of Fame, I'm taking a band that we've done an album by them, but every chance I get, I bring this band up and ask authors about. And that's Rainbow. So I that's knew a it. little bit off the off the beaten path. Love the band. I love the fact that there's yep. three, actually four, uh, singers on their albums. And I love all of them. I love all the carnations, incarnations of all the rainbow bands, different styles, different things, but it all works for me. So I'm going to put in rainbow, Tom. And that's our, that's the next band in. I'm so glad I, that was my prediction. I'm glad you picked that because that they belong. Yeah. And any chance I get, whether it be Martin or another, our uh, uh, guest that we have coming up soon, I've got to ask, you know? Yep. Absolutely. There's a lot to talk about with that band. Yep. Yeah, so next we go to Kiss Songs. Last year, Come On and Love Me and Black Diamond made it. Yeah, for me, this is easy. My two all-time favorite songs are Come On and Love Me, and then this year. I'm putting in I Stole Your Love. It's the I wave the flag for that song all the time. They played it on Hot in the Shade. It's on Alive 2. I don't know why they don't play it now. It pisses me off. Uh, and it's right there, neck and neck with "Come On and Love Me." It's an automatic entry into the Hall of Fame. Wonderful. All right, cool. Well, for me, Tom, I'm gonna select a song that is everybody's favorite deep cut. Yep. And we always bring it up, and it gets a little bit too much love these days. But I'm also selecting because I love the demo, and I always tell everybody. Um, I prefer the demo. And what I love about it is when we had the great Bruce Kulik on and I told him, you got to listen to the demo version of this of Bob's. And he's like, and he wasn't even aware of that. And then he was like, wow. I'm like, yeah. So because of the demo and everything else. And (laughs) Mr. Speed is just in its own little category. So that's the kiss song that makes it this year. Yeah, and think about it. Mr. Speed, that discussion five years ago was kind of the genesis of this podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of the reason we're here right now. Songs not on compilations. Absolutely. We thought about the first thing we wanted to do is like, let's talk about songs that should be on Kiss compilations that aren't. That's right. That's That's right. The best of them. Well, we're going to go to Kiss albums next, Tom. Okay. So Kiss albums last year, Love Gun, Rock and Roll Over. Okay, this year I'm going to mix it up a little bit. I had an idea for what I was going to put in, um, but I'm going to switch it up a little bit just because of my absolute adoration for this album. Uh, it's my favorite non-makeup Kiss album. So, yes, a non-makeup album is going into the Hall of Fame. Uh, 
and it's Revenge putting it in there. Wow. Well, it's uh, it's my favorite non makeup album. It's it's right there as one of my favorite overall Kiss albums. Um, when we're done ranking all these, you know, I, I know where it's ranked right now. And then, of course, my love for Bruce and our friendship with him. It's it's going in there for me. Okay. Yep. Tom, I'm gonna kind of go off on a little off the beaten path here. Okay. Uh, for me, I'm gonna put. Kiss Alive. Wow. Okay. A studio album, right? That's so, right. I mean, to me, that's, I, I, I mean, I don't even have any affinity for it when I was a young kid. I don't remember anything. But once I got back into Kiss, uh, you know, by the time I'm middle school and stuff like that, I would listen to this album. I just think there's so many classic things. And when we uh, talk to all these people about things for the book coming up, yeah. <clears throat> raise your glasses coming soon yeah the affinity that it has and the the moments the the the, the banter the uh ace outros or 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 the comment it's just or peter um kiss alive is it's just got so many kiss moments that it needs to be in there yep okay i'm not gonna fight you on that one at all tom next we're gonna move over to movies Last year, we had Revenge of the Nerds and The Godfather. Well, I'll pick one. You pick one. We both agreed on both of these. So we're going to go uh, like last year. The comedy going in this year is something we talk about all the time. References, quotes. It's coming to America. It's going Hell in there. Yeah. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Easy. When yep. you think of movies for Hall of Fame, think of Hakeem. Exactly. Yes. I'm very happy to be here. Yes, exactly. Yep. Uh, Tom, the next one is, well, it made it in the first one. He could have made it last year, too. Yep. And that is the second version of this movie. <laughs> the Godfather 2. That's right. Jesus Christ, Mike. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Tom. You're putting in another Godfather. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Let's get it done now while we Let's got get... the muscle. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Godfather yes. 2. Just one of those movies that you're like, you know what? Is it better than the first? And I don't yes. know. It may be. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. All right. A favorite of the Loudcasters. The next category is porn stars. Last year, we had the great Peter North throwing <laughs> ropes to everybody in town. And then for the maybe greatest comment in a porn movie of all time, Tracy Lords made it after saying the classic line, what? I was drunk on cock. It's so stupid. <laughs> drunk on cock. Okay. Uh, Tom, what do we got for porn stars? Well, so this year is uh, a lovely lady, very, uh, very near and dear to my heart. I've actually seen her live performing oh. at a strip joint. <laughs> performing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not performing a sexual act, performing adult entertainment, dancing. I'm a very, she's a very busy dancer. <laughs> she's a very busy dancer as well. But she's still on social media. And, uh, but I'm not putting her in there for that. I'm putting her in there for her 80s. And that is Christy Canyon. Or Zeus likes to call her <laughs> Christy Cannons. We got a fucking, what do you call it? A cameo from her. Remember? We do. Yeah. We do. Yeah. And she's like, oh, what do you have a podcast? <laughs> oh, oh, hello. <laughs> do you want to look at, do you want to look at my breasts? <laughs> Christy does 15 plumbers. You want to oh. see that? No, no, no. Uh, number two, Tom, she makes Christy Cannon look like Bo Derek in her prime. And that is another cameo. Oof. All, all because of a mistake. Instead of PJ Spock, we got the great and lovely. Lisa Sparks. Oh, God. That poor thing. Oof. 
Oh, she did. She has never met a bakery that she doesn't like. <laughs> she's got. She's got like plastic bags of fucking sand holding up her boobs. <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> Tons of fun there. Oof. Yikes. Lisa Sparks making it. Oh, God. Yep. Tom, we're going to another favorite category. Okay. Celebrity. So, Tom, last year in the celebrity category, we had. Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Jerky Boys. Yes. This year, we're putting in my wife. <laughs> we're putting in the king. Well, not king, but. <laughs> Borat is going in this year. <laughs> Oh, come on, pussycat. <laughs> Show a smile. Come on. <laughs> I never get tired of Borat. I don't care. 20-something 20, 20 years later, I still love the guy. And celebrity number two. I don't think it's a celebrity. It's She's bare, she, that We're using that term very loosely here with her. <laughs> and there's nothing loosely on her. <laughs> Ooh, yikes. And that is the great and beautiful... Jan Terry makes it <laughs> in the celebrity category. Can you imagine right now that Jan Terry is in the Hall of Fame and Joey Casada <laughs> is not and will not? <laughs> imagine that. Oh, that's just awful. <laughs> Jan Terry makes the Hall of Fame in oh the celebrity God. category. <laughs> We're being very generous with that term. Let me tell you. Singing songs near a lake with a sewer pipe. <laughs> Sexy sewer pipe. Oh. All right, oh. Tom. We're going to go into something different now. Okay. We're going into non kiss albums. Last year, we had moving pictures and automatic for the people. This is an album that we've done on ARC. Uh, it's an album that's near and dear to our hearts. Uh, an album that goes all the way back to college and an album that we still listen to now. Uh, and it belongs, it's a Hall of Fame album for many, many reasons, but I'm putting in the singles soundtrack. Ooh. Yeah. It's a very important album for the both of us. Uh, we still listen to it now. We still listen to all the bands that are on it now, so it's got to go in there. That's a great one. Good pick. Yep. Yep. All right, Tom. For me, I've got to look at this and figure this out. I'm going to take an album we I just can't seem to figure out if I can fit it into uh, one of its versions onto album review crew. We haven't done it, but okay. I listen to it all the time. It's probably my favorite thing of this artist. And that is Elvis 68 comeback special soundtrack. All right. Love so I, I can't get enough of it. If you are an Elvis fan, you know what I'm talking about. Yep. It is just so incredible. And it always gets, it, it gets a lot of play time now because yep. it was like supposedly a Christmas special. So this time yep. of year, it's always gets a lot of action stuff. The Elvis 68 comeback special. There's always different versions of it. There's parts yep. where he plays fucking in a little round table acoustic set with his original guitar player and yep. a bunch of others. Then there's other shit. He'll do a gospel number. Then he's doing, in a fucking just singing all the old time classics with a more mature, hard rocking voice. Yep. And then, you know, he, he'll do g guitar man in this segment. And then it shows off with a camera pans back. And next, thing you know, he's on top of this humongous sign that says yep. Elvis flashing. Wonder yep. where Kiss got at that idea. Imagine. Fuck I know. Love it. I know. Love it. Love it. Love it. Anyway, Elvis 68 comeback special for me is a non-kiss album that needs to be in there. So, Tom, we're doing non-kiss songs now. Last year, we did Limelight and Find the River Yep, from R.E.M. Okay. What do we got this year? So, this album was going to go in, and it probably will eventually. Uh, but again, I was given some really big kudos to the single soundtrack because of its importance. Uh, so, for non-kiss song, I'm putting in the title track...
from Master of Puppets. My favorite Metallica song is going in there. Wow. Yep. Yep. The album will probably get in there eventually, of course. Yeah, I don't blame you. So, yeah. Tom, for having uh, the one of the greatest guitar solos of all time, be one of my favorite songs, and probably will move up when we revisit all our listings. That yep. is the great. Hotel California for me. Nice. The lyrics, the vocals, the fucking guitar solo. I just never get tired of it. Never. Yep. I agree. Perfect. All right. In the stupid category. Yeah, we have a couple stupid categories coming up. Food and beverage, Tom. Last year, a couple slices of Roni made it and mellow yellow. Yeah. What's you want to do the first you, you 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 want to do the first one this year? Yeah, the first one is some I'm going to get myself a cotton a- <laughs> cashews. Of course, it's got to go in there. And then the second one, which I actually think was the genesis for Mellow Yellow. Yes. Is uh A nice uh, fountain cola. <laughs> yeah, because I think that's what started it all. Yeah, we were at that shop, and we're gonna get a couple slices of roni and a fountain cola. Do you realize that in two years, in four nominations, are all ace related? <laughs> Mellow yellow, slice of roni, <laughs> cashews, and fountain cola. We yes. this this show is really this show is very sophisticated. Yes, we are classy over here. Very sophisticated. Tom, the next thing we have is oh, this gets even to better. Continue, to continue in that theme, yeah. characters. Last year we had Mr. Feces <laughs> and poor eighth grade English teacher King, who had like eggs and exacto knives thrown at him when he would turn his back. Poor guy. So for this year, the first person getting in is that poor kid from fucking high school growing up. Cukes. No, no, this is the part of the show where I love it if new listeners are checking us out and they're like, wait, wait, what? What's what's what does cukes mean? What does that mean? Short for cucumber. Because supposedly the kid got caught working at Stop and Shop fucking supermarket in the back room sticking a cucumber up his ass. <laughs> oh, God. That, you know that's not true. But of course it's not true. He got the nickname, and he would be, like, walking through the halls, and someone would go, Cukes! <laughs> fucking awful. Well, well, well and, then to, and then to make the inside jokes even better. Uh, our, the next character is our college German housekeeper. Erda, also known as Humblips. <laughs> she used to put like this Vaseline shit on the side of her mouth. She used way too much <laughs> lip balm. Yeah, or something. I'd be like, ew, cum lips, what's on your mouth? And she'd be like, what? What is your problem? You boys are disgusting. This place is gross. Fuck it. Fuck off, Herda. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, cukes and Herda. Glad, oh. glad we're very mature role model type of people, Tom. It's amazing. It's amazing how sophisticated we are. Good Lord. All right, Tom. Here's a favorite category of all of ours. Yep. Celebrity crushes. Yep. Last year, Britney Spears and Julie Newmar, the original Catwoman, made it. Yep. Yep. What do we got this year? I think everyone oh, this, knows th- yours. This is an easy. This is an easy one. This is the. <laughs> Samantha Fox, by far. And I got to give kudos to our buddy and listener, Rick Rarer, who's constantly posting pictures of her on Friday afternoon saying, have a good weekend. <laughs> Does oh, he yeah. put in stuff and say Friday night at eight? <laughs> I wish. 
Yeah. Uh, she uh, she's a favorite of yours and has been for years. Yes. Years. Yes. Well, yeah. mine is a newer favorite, meaning the last four years or so. But yeah. I, I, I gush over her all the time and I sent you a photo of her. She's like, <laughs> her Instagram is her in her back in a fucking bikini. Uh, she loves to wear sports bras and fucking show her tight body. And she's a politician. <laughs> and gorgeous face. Looks like a young Courtney Cox. Gorgeous eyes, black yep. hair. And that is the wonderful former prime minister of Finland. Santa Marin. Oh, Un- unbelievable. I oh, love she's it. She's gorgeous. Fucking, how the fuck pick. is she's got all these pics and they're like all like hinting at like lesbianism or something or yeah. another pic of her with her jacket but no bra on yep. or her in a bikini and her just looking at the fucking her Instagram fucking shit <laughs> like boring boring yes yes boring yep. boring yes yes <laughs> yep it's oh, true love her yep anyways yeah, and then we have politicians in America like Elizabeth Warren what the <laughs> fuck are we doing wrong in this country <laughs> just- Jesus Christ <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Thanks for ruining it. <laughs> oh, no. Yep. Uh, Tom, we're going to move to a newer category we didn't have last year. Okay. And that is actors. Do you have a favorite okay. actor, Tom? I do. Uh, my favorite actor of all time, he can do it all. He's hilarious in any of his comedy roles, but he's obviously well-known for a lot of uh, dramatic mob-related roles. And uh, to me, that is the GOAT. Robert De Niro, no doubt. I love everything he does, whether it's something like Midnight Run or Meet the Parents, and then, of course, Goodfellas, you know, his role in Godfather 2 or whatever he does. He's just the fucking man. Greg's a nurse. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have nipples. Can you milk me? <laughs> uh, Greg's Jewish. <laughs> Greg's <laughs> Oh, he's great. Uh, what are you talking about? Tom- a, what are you talking? What are you talking about? It's a boy with with a with a, with a dragon. Is uh, you pothead fucker? <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine is uh, he can't do the comedy roles as good, but I feel like he is my favorite actor. He, I mean, he went through a string in the seventies that can never be matched. Yep, and uh, he he is just legendary to me. And that is the great Al Pacino. Uh, I can't, uh, there's nothing that I, I can see, like whether it's Injustice for All, Dog Day Afternoon, uh, obviously The Godfathers. Then he comes back and he's doing Scarface. He's doing all sorts of shit. Donnie Brasco. It just, he's in a league of his own. And he does Jimmy Hoffa yeah. and uh, the Heat. I mean, yeah, I would. I, it, I'm so glad you picked you put him in because he's probably my second favorite actor behind De Niro. I just I think De Niro tips the scale for me because of the, just the ability to do the comedy. I thought you were going to say because of his politics. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We we definitely share a brain there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, Tom, let's go to another new category. Okay. And I'm surprised we didn't get to it last year, and that is TV shows. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this is easy. We reference this show more than anything ever, uh, whether it's this show or ARC with Sonny. Uh, and then it's Seinfeld. It's got to go in there. Yeah. It's the source. It's the source of so many references in, in inside jokes and catchphrases constantly on this show. So either it's the Jerky Boy Seinfeld Godfather, maybe the biggest of all our like inside, I would jokes. say, I would say so. Right. Yep. yep. Right. Yep. Yeah. I would say so. Yep. All right. So Tom, then let's uh, go to the next one. And that would be. I'm putting in three's company. Uh, which again, thank God, because it's probably my second favorite show. And any of you people out there that have streaming services, there's a streaming service called Pluto TV. It's free. You don't need to pay for anything. And they have these 
dedicated channels to certain shows and they literally have a threes company channel. It's, Dude, it's awesome. It's, it is non-stop threes company. And when I'm tired and I can't find anything to put on the TV, I'll sit on the couch with my dog and I'll put on the threes company channel and I'll just friggin' laugh and just laugh. It's just, it's insane. Uh, Great picks. Just, Great yeah, picks. It's just uh, anybody in our age group, we all love Three's Company. The great Sean Ritter. Just amazing. Yep. Tom, our next category is Shout It Out Loud cast episode. We put in number six, Smashes, Thrashes, and Shit. And episode 100, the Bruce Kulik draft with Bruce Kulik and Chris Jericho. What's going in this year? Well, we had a lot of great episodes that could have been here for Hall of Fame. But the first one is going to be episode Two thirty, and that is when we spoke with the great Bruce Kulick about his late great brother Bob Kulick, and he broke down all of the songs that Bob contributed to the Kiss catalog, including Paul Stanley's solo album, etc. So, just an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal episode. Yeah, Bruce shared a lot of personal stuff, and it was just eye-opening for listeners, for me, you, uh, just. The conversation about the, all the contributions Bob made and hearing Bruce give his input about all those songs, that's just a special episode for me. Yep. I, I mean, yep. I know you feel the same way. So, Absolutely. No doubt. And the second episode to get into the Hall of Fame. That is D. Snyder, episode 239. Not sure any episode ever got more attention and press than that. And it's not for the conversation we went into the episode with, in which he D gave some passionate, honest opinions about Paul and Gene and Kiss and all that. But it's this little off little remark he made about Metallica. Oh, my God. And their set list. It got us more press than anything else we've probably ever done so far. Yeah. First of all, he was phenomenal on his own, but then to see the episode go viral because of some of his comments just was just put us put us on the map with some of these uh, sites and 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 you know stories out there. So for that, uh, that just launches it into Hall of Fame category. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Next catchphrases, Tom. Oh, last we love year, this. Yeah, last year we had I kiss. Yep. And the Ace Cult. Yep. What do we got this year? Well, this one for me was an easy entry into the Hall of Fame, and that is... <laughs> Welcome new listeners, <laughs> which kind of started as a goof when we would just be talking and doing our stupid shit. We would start talking about porn stars or just shitting in the fucking whatever. And all of a sudden I'd just be like, Jesus Christ, welcome to <laughs> listeners. Like, and, then, and then it just became a thing for us. So <laughs> yeah, that's a great yep. one, Tom. Great yep. one. Yep. And the second is could have been in there last year. <laughs> Pandemic Paul makes it. Say pandemic, Paul. Everybody knows that insufferable online social media Paul Stanley oh. fucking image that we all have. Him bragging about eating gelato on his electric bike and talking about virtues of listening to Otis Redding's last track on his yep. first album. Like just yep. insufferable shit. Yep. I so mean, he, pin, he, he, yeah. yeah, he, he very, very easily could have gone in last year, but just the other one just took it. But we, he has to be a hall. That has to be a hall of famer. Pandemic Paul. Yep. Absolutely. Tom, one of my favorite categories. And I wish we could expand it, but then if we put everybody in, it takes away from what, what it is. That's right. And that is the loudcaster hall of fame. Uh, last year's first class, I Love It Louder, and the great Jim Riley. Both of them still fucking integral part of our show. Both of them, we love them. But we also love these two. 
first. Tom, who do we have? Yeah, again, this is so difficult, but there are certain people that just help us out in many different ways, you know, show related, non show related. Uh, and the first entry into the class of 2023 is going to be the great. Anthony Barone from ABCPA Inc. Not only do we have a partnership with him for advertising, but we've been friends with him through the show for so long. And he also helped me personally with some tax business earlier in the year after a very difficult 2022. Um, and we still continue to stay in touch on social media. You know, we obviously talk about Kiss and he knows I have a love for Rush, um, you know, vinyl, et cetera, et cetera. And He's just a great resource, and we consider him a friend. And, uh, you know, happy to say that he is now a Loudcaster Hall of Famer. Yeah, Tony is great. Uh, I, I send referrals to him for yep. my law practice. He's always quick to get back to me. So even regardless, he's a Hall of Fame fucking businessman. I'll tell you that because he is fantastic to work with. You guys should all reach out to him, abcpainc.com. That's but right. That's besides right. Besides that, he is one of the original demon tier Patreon members as well. That's right. That is right. Yep. Okay. So, yep. Tony, thank you and it's well earned, my friend. We love you. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Number two, and go to show you, it's not all about Patreon and shit like that. Right. Number two, I'll remember it from where, uh, where I was in the beginning, where he, this guy, was like, I have something and I can get it for you. Well, holy fuck. It's like, yeah, yeah, you don't have to pay me for it. Just pay for the shipping. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? And not only that, but every single fucking kiss album on a magnet. Oh my God. Is sent to us. Yep. Anything we ever, even without asking for, he'll send to us. Yep. Fucking cool as all hell. We got to hang out with him and met him in person, had a fucking blast with him at Creatures Fest. Yep. And then everybody loves him, but we want to show some extra love for him by putting him in the Hall of Fame, and it's so well-deserved. And that's our good friend Gary Cap. Absolutely. Also known as Angry Airport Gary. <laughs> Uh, Gary, we love you, buddy. Uh, just, we have such a friggin' good time with you. Uh, whether it's in person at Creatures Fest, it's going to be in person in New York City, uh, messaging with you, texting you the incredible generosity that you'd give for us with the gifts and things that you send us. And it's just a pleasure to have you as a friend and as a loudcaster. And, you know, we're just really excited to have you be, uh, a Hall of Famer now. It's, it's awesome for us. And that goes for all you guys, but you know, there's this a special bond that Tom and I have made like some really good yep. friends. Yep. And you know, Jim Riley, I love it louder. Tony Barone, Gary Cap, not you know, we just want to shine a little bit extra light on them and our friendship with them and their kindness and what they've done for us in the yep. show. Yes. Is above and beyond. Yep. And we want to make sure they feel that, uh, you know, they're recognized and that they know we appreciate them and they're the fucking best. And there's plenty of other people that we can choose from for next year. And, yep. uh, thank you guys for that. Yep. Now. All right, Tom. Two big ones for us left. Yep. First one. Contributor. Last year we had. The great Murph, our first guest. That's right. Sonny Pooney. Yes, still contributing. Uh, the two of them still contributing. Big help to us in the beginning. A friend of the show has been on now with Album Review Crew now for four years. Awesome guy. So those two guys are in as contributors to the show. Yep. Tom, we have two new contributors going to make it this year. Yep. So the first member going into the class of 2023 under the contributor category is our friend. And he hosts his own podcast and he is a co-host with us on the Zeppelin Chronicles.
And that is the great Jay from the Hook Rocks. We love Jay. Hung out with him at Creatures Fest also. Love his show. We've been on his show. He's been on our show. And, of course, we share a love and an affinity for Led Zeppelin. And he is a uh, contributor and founding member of the Zeppelin Chronicle. So, Jay, welcome to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, Jay's got his own successful show, a pay, uh, Pantheon Brother. Uh, he, he helps us with the Zeppelin Chronicles, but behind the scenes, too, always uh, uh, willing to help out, always some constructive feedback and back and forth with each other, growing each other's podcast. I can't, I can't say how refreshing his attitude is about shit like that compared to a lot of other people that he is just, you know, Oh, you guys did this great first to congratulate us first to say, uh, you know, to send praise or give an idea and, and not be like so possessive or jealous or angry or other thing that a lot of, fucking people get in this podcasting world uh yep. jay's awesome so we thank you buddy and congrats absolutely love jay love his shows love his contributions and uh glad he's a friend absolutely second the second person going in as a contributor he is a handsome man i bug him fucking constantly hey uh can you edit this photo for me hey uh <laughs> you think you can get this for me that is the wonderful and handsome Jeff Trot. Oh boy, do we love Jeff. Jeff is the man. We had such a friggin' blast with him on the cruise. We can't thank him enough for all the contributions that he's done for us. Anytime we ask him to do anything for us, a graphic, an image, an editing, something, he always helps us out. And we love him. We're glad he's a friend. We appreciate that he tolerates us. Yes. And uh, and it, he's just a great guy. We can't wait to see him in New York City as well. So, so Jeff, welcome to the Hall of Fame, my friend. Yeah, Jeff is one of those guys. He's got an infectious laugh, and I always want to make him laugh. So I love fucking cracking him up. And oh, yeah. Fantastic. And he has about as much patience with kissed hard shit as we do, which oh. is fucking awesome. I always look forward to when our episode drops and then we get a text from Jeff, like, yeah. like Saturday morning. <laughs> yes, like it's yes. just, it's, it, it's always a great time. It's oh, always a great we time. love him. So yep. Jeff and Jay, thank you guys for contributing to the show. Last yep. we have Tom. Yes. Yeah. So last year, the great Chris Jericho made it and the great Eddie trunk made it. That's right. Yep. So we've had incredible guests we've been on an incredible run a lot of big names famous people so let's go to that list this is the last category fellas that's right yeah he's been on the show a bunch of times uh we're thrilled to call him a friend uh we've been lucky enough to communicate directly via email with him uh and share some really good moments of history and discussion Uh, and that is the great Bruce Kulick. Uh, he deserves to be in every Hall of Fame. Uh, for Christ's sake, he should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame when Kiss was inducted. Um, so the least we can do is put him in our Hall of Fame. And uh, we love Bruce, and we're happy to have him in here. Yeah, and Bruce has been part of some of our best episodes. Just that Bob episode alone, he should be yep. in. He's yep. been a great friend. He lets us know, yes, we have great confidence, and we got to have Fun time with him, seeing him in Vegas with his lovely wife. Great guy. Bruce Kulick, definitely Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Well, Tom, the guy that gave us the biggest um, publicity this year, we'll wrap this up with him. I mean, he deserves to be in there. And he was an incredible guest, probably one of our biggest names we've ever had. Yep. So, sorry. I know you guys thought he was going to get in, but he's not. That is... All right, Joey Casada. He made it. He's in. Yeah, we were going to put Joey Casada in regardless because he's been an incredible guest. Uh, all things considered, his fucking uh, times on this show are always some of the no notes needed, best fucking conversation dialogue we've had with 
anybody on the show knows his shit can throw jokes and insults back and forth with all of us and on top of that dude the guy is is, is made our fucking festivus episodes a must listen yeah and for all the for all the fun we have about him not being in the hall of fame he's we've become such great friends with him i mean let's not forget you know again for all the shit we give him but again we're all we're all new yorkers bostonians this is what we do is bus balls He's a great fucking drummer. He's a great musician. We're proud to call him a friend. I know we're gushing on him a little bit right now. That's what we do with these Hall of Fame episodes. He deserves to be in. I'm sure he's probably pissed he's in because now he doesn't have anything to bitch about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was getting so much fucking social media attention <laughs> exactly. because he's not in. Now exactly. what's he going to do? Now, now what's he, and of course you add on the fact that he's, uh, collaborating with us on our upcoming book. Uh, uh you know, raise your glasses. Yep, he's a he's a he's a certifiable Hall of Famer. So we're proud to finally put him in. Yeah, one fucking year he had to wait. Sorry, he didn't beat out Eddie Trunk and Chris Jericho. Jesus Christ! It's true. Jesus, it's true. Jesus, Jesus Christ! Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, Joey! Joey. Let's put let's put him in now while we got the muscle. <laughs> yeah, let's let's get him in now while there's nobody else <laughs> we can think of. <laughs> Now, we do have a special public service announcement here. Yes. Oh, yeah, Tom. Go ahead, please. Okay. We know that the episode drops on midnight Saturday Eastern time. And we know that people from all over the country, all around the world, listen to the show. And we're very proud of that and pleased for that. So we know that people listen at different times. Please, please don't spoil this episode the minute it drops. We know that people are excited about the Hall of Fame. We know that people are going to have fun with Joey getting in. Please try to wait until at least we post on social media, at least at least until people have had a chance to listen. OK, we don't want people to be spoiled. We know it's hard because everybody likes to have conversations about this, but just try to just try to try to do that a little bit. OK, we don't want people to wake up and open up Twitter and be like, holy shit, Joey got in and be like, OK, gr-. I mean, I, we know you're going to listen anyways, and we're happy for that. But just try to wait a little bit. Yeah, it's a good problem to have that our listeners love. It is a good problem to have. And, it is a good uh, problem uh, to have. Right. It is. But it's like a movie. It's like when everybody, when somebody goes and sees a new movie, wait a little bit before you start talking about the ending. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a good problem. All you guys, you were the last Hall of Famer. <laughs> as George Carlin would say. That's right. Guys, that's it for 2023 Hall of Fame. Congratulations to that wonderful class. Absolutely. Congrats, 2023. You guys all rock. Thank you so much for everything. Tom, what we do next is we go to question of the week. You got one. Yeah, we do. Uh, speaking of uh, Finland, we got a question from our buddy Yanni Aslak Rasanen. Hey, guys, greetings from snow-covered Ulu, Finland. I got a question for everybody here. Back in 1996, when the reunion happened, what if the band first went into the studio and then went on the road? Ooh. If the reunion, if the reunion would have also brought a new album from the original members with outside players or not, and then the reunion tour would have also been a supporting tour for that album instead of just a nostalgia trip, do you think things would have been different for the original four? All the best. Have fun in New York City. Look for the boozing hellraisers in the crowd. They're most likely to be Finns. Nice. So yeah, he's saying. I, yeah, so, so I, he's I saying, agree yeah, with that. Yeah, if they recorded the album first, and then the reunion tour was like a like a supporting album tour, and not just a live worldwide reunion. Yeah, I think that would be kind of different. Uh, I think maybe perhaps. If they said, all right, let's try and Ace and Peter perform, maybe there'd be a little bit more camaraderie or maybe the, that album wouldn't be more of a fucking punch to the stomach when they're already starting to feel like, wow, this tour is doing so well. Yeah. Oh, let's do an album together. Yeah, but we don't really want you to contribute. Now it's just right. going down, 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 downhill between the, the members instead yeah. of starting up up high and then trying to keep it going. I think it would have made a huge difference. I, I'm going to disagree a little bit. I don't know if it would have made a huge difference only because 
I just think the mentality of Ace and Peter at the time, I don't think anything would have changed. I think if the album was, if they, if they let the band perform on the album, now again, there are reports that saying that Peter couldn't have performed the way the album should have sounded. And Ace couldn't have either. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if anything would have saved, you know, that, that, you know, 95, 96 through, you know, that I don't know if anything would have saved that era and mm-hmm. made it last or whatever. I, I do wish you bring up a good point. I do wish that Psycho Circus or whatever that album would have been was the four of them. It didn't happen. Um, but I don't know if anything could have saved the fallout from that. But we love these what if questions, Yanni and, uh, we're going to be keeping an eye out for you in New York City, even though we don't look, what you, even though we don't know what you look like. We're going to look for uh, drunken fins and see if we can find you, my friend. So, thank you for the question. Great as always, Tom. Where can people find us? We always say go to our website, shoutitoutloudcast.com. Make sure that you can find all the episodes, all the Shout It Out Loudcast episodes, Dorm Damage album review, crew Zeppelin Chronicles. You can find links to all of our social media. You can find links to our Amazon shopping, our merch, our Patreon. You can also message us directly from the website. We receive those in the form of an email. Uh, and if you want to be your question of the week, you can use the website or you can use our email, shoutoutloudcast at gmail.com. We read each and every email that you send us. We're not able to read them all during the show, although we'd love to, but we do want to let you know that when you send us emails, we absolutely read them. We try to respond to them. We try to read them. but you know, it's a nice problem to have. We do get a lot of them. So thank you for that. And of course, you can follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And of course, we always like to say that we are a proud member of the Pantheon podcast network of shows. Yeah, people can always DM us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, X, threads, TikTok, motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, that has been consistently growing and it's thanks to your support. We really love the interaction there. Give us one of those five star child reviews. Uh, we can get those on Apple podcast, even on Amazon. We got a couple more on Amazon, Tom, for our products. Hell yeah. The great Todd Herrig. Awesome Patreon member there. Absolutely. He a fucking ace cult shirt. Yeah. <laughs> the tongue in cheek humor dispensed on the shout out loudcats each week is matched by their production of t shirts. When I saw this, <laughs> I knew I had to have one. How fucking that is cool awesome. Is that is awesome, Todd. Thank you. And we really appreciate all of your support. And don't forget, shout it out loudcast merch makes an awesome holiday gift for everybody. Uh, are actually, we done pretty well, uh, recently, uh, with the Amazon store and our merch. Uh, it's an easy find and people have been ordering them left and right. It's actually done very, very well so far. So yep. remember for all that kiss hard near you, a shout it out loudcast merch, uh, t shirt would probably make a good gift. So love it. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So. Yep. Please, you can always go to our website to check out all that stuff. Shoutoutloudcast.com. Shoutoutloudcast.com. Tom, what we always do is we end on famous last words. You got any? I do. Of course. You never stop running around. You pick me up. Then you could still put me down. You were the girl that nobody could own. Stay for a while. Then you would leave me alone. Ah, uh, oh, poor Paul. You need loving. You're looking out for new romances. Yeah, it's true. You know you've got to take your chances. All the Hall of Fame, new members, old members, all those people that got considered loudcasters, Kiss Army, Tom, thank you. Hall of Fame, guys, you're the best. Congrats on everybody, and that includes you, Joey. And I just want to say a little something extra here. This will be the final episode during Kiss's active touring career. The next episode we record, Kiss will no longer be, quote-unquote, active. That's 
this is kind of becoming a big deal to me as we approach this. So I just want to thank everybody for supporting the show. We guys, we love you guys. That's all I can say right now because it's just too much for me. But Zeus, as always, my friend, thank you. Peace out, Girl Scout. Hit the music. What I'd like now is for all you fat, out of shape, worldwide kiss cards to keep the noise down while I show your ladies what a real sexy man looks like. Listen, all you people out there sitting on rented furniture, settle down. Cut the music. Anybody see Richie? Anybody know why Richie did Bobby Lupo?